In a world constantly evolving, understanding how we can effectively change behaviors has become crucial for personal growth, social progress, and global sustainability. Today, I want to talk about a topic that has the power to shape lives, societies, and the world as a whole, the science behind behavioral change. Behavioral change is a fascinating and complex phenomenon that has been studied across various disciplines, including psychology, neuroscience, sociology, and economics. At its core, behavioral change refers to the process by which individuals or groups modify their actions, habits, and routines. Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to stick to a new exercise routine or a diet, or why New Year's resolutions have become a running joke? We start motivated and determined, only to fall back into our comfortable behaviors the minute it becomes a bit more of a struggle than we had anticipated. And it always does. I'm just not built for exercising, we decide. Or why make the bed if I unmake it every night anyway? But the problem is hardly ever us. It's often our approach and the lack of knowledge about what happens behind the scenes of our behaviors. So what exactly is there to know about the mechanisms involved in behavioral change? And what's the recipe for success? Behavioral change isn't just about willpower or intentions. It's a complex interplay of psychological, neurological, and social factors. To truly grasp the science behind it, we need to delve into three key aspects. The triggers for change, the process of change, and the factors that influence its success. Understanding the science behind behavioral change is crucial for designing effective interventions, promoting healthier lifestyles, and driving positive societal transformations. There are four stages of forming a habit. If at least one of the stages is missing, the habit will never stick. But when all of them are present and the loop repeats enough times, the action becomes automated and turns into a habit. If you are ready to change your life for the better, all you need is to be aware of what's happening behind the scenes of your behaviors and know the importance of starting small. Firstly, let's explore the triggers for behavioral change. Change often starts with a trigger, a catalyst that pushes us to reconsider our actions. These triggers can be internal, such as a health scare prompting someone to adopt a healthier lifestyle, or external, like societal norms encouraging sustainable choices. Understanding these triggers helps us design interventions that resonate with individuals and communities, making change more likely and sustainable. In the digital age, technology and data play a pivotal role in behavioral change. Apps and wearable devices can provide real-time feedback and reinforcement, making individuals more aware of their actions and progress. The Formula of Lasting Changes you might be relieved to hear that you need neither motivation nor willpower to make a lasting lifestyle change. They might be effective in the short term, but are not sustainable in the long run. Behavioral science has a more structured approach to our behavior, suggesting that there are patterns in our actions based on the connection between our minds and behaviors. Knowing and predicting those patterns, we can build healthier habits, discover our natural strengths, and use those to enter the flow state, a place where we can unlock our full potential. Let's consider the factors that influence the success of behavioral change efforts. Neuroscience has shown that habits are encoded in our brain's neural pathways, which can be both a blessing and a hurdle. By understanding how habits are formed, we can work towards replacing negative behaviors with positive ones and reinforce those positive changes over time. The Four Stages of the Habit Loop Everything our brain does is for a reason. There is a reason why you prefer a cup of coffee to a glass of water and would rather ride the elevator than take the stairs. There is also a reason why you were so consistent in your preferences. In his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear suggests that our every behavior is motivated by a four-step loop. And each time we perform that behavior, our brain goes through the same stages, always in the same order. 1. Q. Your brain constantly scans the environment for rewards. Over time, it learns which behaviors are potentially rewarding and which are not. Once that information is registered, it becomes a cue that triggers your brain to perform a particular action, because it now anticipates the reward that the cue signals. So when you see a bar of chocolate, your brain instantly goes, that is so delicious, go for it. 2. Craving The only reason we ever act is that we desire a certain level of change. We are hardly ever motivated by the action itself. 
we mainly crave the change it will bring. For example, you do not necessarily desire to down a whole glass of chocolate milkshake, but you do crave the sweet taste and quenching your thirst. Your craving is then a powerful motivator behind that habit. 3. Response This is the actual thought or action you will perform after craving a specific result. The likelihood of you doing it depends not only on your motivation, but also on your ability to perform a particular action. For example, you can't become an early riser if you work night shifts. 4. Reward This is the end goal of every habit and what your brain was pursuing from the very start. A reward gives you a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. It also teaches you what actions are worth remembering and doing again in the future to achieve the same relief. So, if you've been exercising for several weeks and are starting to see the results, you will want to keep at it to see even better ones. Keystone Habits Have you ever noticed that a single choice can start a whole chain reaction? Let's say you decide not to finish a work task, so you might as well binge on this new TV series everyone is talking about. And while you are at it, how about a bowl of popcorn, which goes so well with a beer? You stay up late and wake up groggy the following day, unable to focus on your work or do anything productive. Our behaviors are like dominoes. Push one and the rest will follow. It's the principle of keystone habits. They are the singular habits that have a ripple effect in your life, leading to a cascade of other good habits. When you take a small step toward building one healthy habit, you start to scale it. Then you make other healthy choices because they are now more compatible with your behavior. Someone who takes up running will likely quit smoking or at least start smoking a lot less, while someone who keeps an eye on their expenses will stop buying unnecessary items. The Wheel of Change Changing our behavior is not an easy feat. Mistakes are inevitable, and it's healthy to go into something knowing that you are very likely to fail at some point. But the important part is what you choose to do with these failures. Do you give up or use them as lessons? In the 1980s, two researchers tried to understand how and why people change. Prochaska and Di Clementi's Wheel of Change outlines stages that every person who wants to drop a habit will go through. It is important to note that in any process of change, people spin through it multiple times before they get to a stable kind of change. In this wheel, relapse is normal. The two researchers see it as just another stage of change. 1. The Pre-Contemplation Stage The Entry Point for the Process of Change a pre-contemplator is someone who knows they have a problem, even if they aren't conscious of it. 2. The contemplation stage Someone in this stage will simultaneously think about and reject the idea of change. The best way to describe their experience is a back and forth between reasons to change and to keep living the same way. 3. The preparation stage This stage is like a window of opportunity. It makes way for a new phase of life. If someone in this stage manages to enter the action stage, their change process will move forward. If they don't, they'll go back to the contemplation stage. 4. The Action Stage This is where people start taking specific actions to help them change. The goal during this stage is to create a change in the problem you want to solve. But just having the intention to change doesn't guarantee that you'll maintain that change over time. 5. The Maintenance Stage in this stage, the challenge is to maintain the change you achieved and not relapse. But still, relapses are normal and you should expect them when you try to change any behavioral pattern you've had for a long time. Habits are formed by those who learn from their mistakes. Trust the process and keep going. In conclusion, the science of behavioral change reveals that successful transformations require a comprehensive understanding of human psychology neurological processes, social dynamics, and environmental influences. By tailoring interventions to individual needs, leveraging social support, and employing strategies from behavioral economics and technology, we can drive positive and lasting changes that improve lives and contribute to the betterment of society as a whole. Thank you for watching. If you found this video enlightening and valuable, we kindly invite you to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Until we meet again, keep listening, keep learning, and keep growing. Stay blessed.